Hi everybody, I'm Sam. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Melee Technologies, where we are building health emergency detection systems for fleet and passenger vehicles. So one of the first questions I usually get is, okay, great, you want to help detect things like heart attacks, seizures, diabetic emergencies, but how often do these events actually happen behind the wheel? Well, it's far more common than people actually think. And this isn't really surprising when you consider about a third of drivers actually have pre-existing conditions that put them at risk of these events behind the wheel. And actually about 80,000 and crashes in the US alone each year are caused by health emergencies. And when these crashes occur, as compared to like distracted driving or drowsy driving, they're actually four times as likely to result in a fatality. So not only are these crashes very common, but they're actually quite severe. And when you look at the commercial vehicle space, this is even more common. It's about twice as common. So 70% of commercial vehicle drivers actually have a pre-existing condition, which lends itself to about $6 billion in damages every year in the United States alone, again, uh, for crashes caused by health events. And so this is where Melee comes in. So we use existing sensors in the vehicle and our software detects when somebody's having these health events, again, things like heart attacks, seizures, diabetic emergencies, strokes, et cetera. We then trigger existing response systems in the vehicle, things like bringing the car to a stop automatically in its lane, turning on the hazard lights, uh, contacting fleet management in the commercial setting, uh, and actually contacting first responders as well. Let them know where the person in distress is and what to expect when they arrive on scene to know if they need advanced medical care as well. But how does our system actually work? So again, as I mentioned, we use existing sensors in the vehicles, things like a driver-facing camera, and for vital signs, things like, well, a lot of automotive players are using things like millimeter wave radar for contactless vitals measurement based on your chest movement. A lot of people are also integrating wearables via Bluetooth. Uh, so we're sensor agnostic. We can work with a variety of sensor configurations in the vehicle to collect these four key points, which are what we focus on as inputs to our models. Facial points, body pose points, heart rate, breath rate. And we know what these health events look like because we actually are working with leading hospitals and universities collecting proprietary data of actual health events occurring in a vehicle environment. We're the first to really do this in mass, and that's how we're able to build our AI models for this. I also wasn't allowed to use a video, so I've given you a tile of photos, um, but I'll walk you through a little bit of a demonstration we did at CES this year, uh, actually with Stellantis, the parent company of 14 major brands, including Chrysler, Fiat, Dodge, Maserati, Ram, Jeep. Um, so we did this demonstration in a Chrysler Pacifica, and so as you see in the top left there, we're showing on a screen kind of what's happening under the hood. Uh, you see facial points being extracted, body pose points being extracted, the heart rate, breath rates being read from a millimeter wave radar that's actually on the seatbelt. Uh, and then when actually, a, uh, for demonstration purposes, we had people lean over triggering a collapsed state detection. And so this is all live. Uh, it would actually show on the head unit in a notification saying, are you OK? So the user could either dismiss it, say, I'm OK, or they could call for help. And or if they didn't answer, it times out automatically. Sometimes when people are having health events, they are fully incapacitated. So we account for that press call help, and then the vehicle takes action. So down here on the bottom left, you're seeing the types of actions being taken by the vehicle. Things again, like stopping the vehicle automatically, turning on the hazard lights, contacting first responders. And here on the right, you actually see the data we would send to first responders. Location, as well as vehicle information. If somebody's in distress and the car hasn't crashed, how will you know which vehicle needs help? This is how you get first responders necessary information, vitals information, and estimates on demographics so they know who they should be looking for. And we've seen significant traction in both the automotive space as well as in the commercial vehicle space. So we're tied in in some way, shape, or form to about eight different automakers uh, and a number of different fleets as well, video telematics suppliers, uh, people really spanning both of those spaces. Same product, two different main verticals. But why do people actually want to work with us? Well, the biggest value is we have an incredibly strong data moat with us doing this data collection with hospitals. It's really hard to get this data and you have to work with hospitals, which is difficult, getting IRB approval, waiting to collect this data because it's all done in observational studies. We're not inducing health events, obviously. Um, it's really hard to get that, and it doesn't exist in mass. So a lot of people want to work with us because we're the only ones who can conclusively understand when a health event's occurring behind the wheel because of this. Expertise and focus, both on the medical side as well as the artificial intelligence side. A lot of regulatory changes are pushing infrastructure like driver-facing cameras to be present in these vehicles, which is great for helping to build that infrastructure for us to live on top of. 
You heard about software-defined radios. Well, we also have the software-defined vehicle. Uh, so this is essentially like your Teslas. The EV market's really pushing this forward. Essentially, cars used to be all these hundreds of different ECUs controlling different components in the vehicle. Processing is becoming centralized in the vehicle. You're starting to see, actually, uh, cars becoming computers on wheels. Uh, you can do software updates. You can control many different systems from the same processing, which just expands the opportunity for technological and software for advances in the vehicle. And these are two very big markets. So our SAM in the automotive space and new vehicles only, so each year, so because we'd have to be installed in the actual vehicles that are new, level two and above autonomy, so things like adaptive cruise control, uh, lateral steering, et cetera, that's about $3.5 billion. In the fleet space, we're more in aftermarket solutions, so the full market, so not annual again, it's about $21 billion. And actually, one more quick highlight. So we have pre-production revenue with pilots, with the folks we're working with now. But I want to highlight that once we're fully in market and production, because we're working with such massive players, revenue starts increasing significantly. So why are we actually the team to build it? Um, well, I have a very technical background. I studied electrical engineering in undergrad, um, computer science here at Cornell Tech, actually. Uh, and I have about 10 years of experience in industry uh, building artificial intelligence models. I'm also a New York certified EMT and do volunteer shifts in Central Park in my free time so know what these health events look like in the wild. My co-founder, John, has a legal finance and business background and experience in transportation regulatory reform. And so together, our mix of skills is able to really bring this to market. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Um, can you talk a bit about what your solution is in, in the fleet um, area? So what, what is it that's being installed? Does yeah. the driver have to wear something? Um, what, are, what are the costs to produce and install, those sorts of things? Great question. So on the fleet side, it varies significantly based on the fleet. Our ideal scenario is that we're installing in a video telematics system. So that's things like SimSAR, Lytx, Nato, because we're a software company at the end of the day. That said, that's a very competitive market right now, and they're understandably wary of other AI solutions. So in the meantime, because fleets want this, but it's hard to integrate into those providers, uh, we are providing off-the-shelf hardware as an interim solution that's part of the initial cost for the fleet. Um, fleets are excited about this, and they're fine with adding that. Actually, a lot of really big fleets don't have driver-facing cameras, and they see the value from it, but they don't want all of the big brother uh, monitoring, getting people in trouble. They'd rather safety solution type of thing like ours. So we can help replace that for them as well. Sam, Sam it's nice to meet in person. I know we chatted a little bit for a catch up afterwards too. Uh, yeah. Could you talk a bit about, uh, congrats on all your progress. Could you, could you talk a bit about, there was a, a, a slide where you showed you guys are booking some revenues through uh, some pilots, but mm -hmm. then you see the real revenue happening, taking place in 2025. Can you talk about what's going to be required to go from what you do with pilots to actually getting to the revenues that you're talking about with the, this these yeah. are with the automotive manufacturers right the oems yeah so it gets a little more nuanced i couldn't get into a lot of that oh, detail yeah. obviously the, that projection is mostly automotive a little bit of fleets but you're going to start seeing bigger fleet revenues in 2024 when we're launching with them in q2 um so the pilot revenues i'll start automotive and then go to fleets um Again, same product, different markets, so still have that focus, which is great. Um, but in automotive, what it looks like is doing things like what we did with Stellantis. That was a paid pilot. Um, so being able to actually show what it looks like, get that public feedback for them, that this is what the public wants and how it can add value, actually be able to demonstrate like how it would interact with the system before you begin technically building it in. And that's like next steps is technically building it in, and that's still paid pilot type thing. And if it's successful, then it would go into every car? Yep. That's, that's, that's it. Well, they'd probably start with a subset. Um, so they have a lot of different innovations that they worked with over the years, for instance, um, and some of them are going into like a million vehicles to start, two millions. It's usually based on the brands, so you're negotiating with specific brands within the conglomerate for that. Um, on the fleet side, it's a little bit more straightforward because, again, you're providing a lot of that hardware uh, initially ourselves, and so you can just install it and they see that it works well. You can run in ghost mode to start with, so show alerts on the back end so there's not too many false positives before they're comfortable launching it at scale. That's great.
great. Thank you. Can you say a little bit about if and how you've thought about other stakeholders? I'm thinking insurance companies, yeah. unions in the trucking industry, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Insurance is one a lot of people think of. And the funny thing is we've talked to a bunch of insurance people because we're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, so we're going to level set with you. Every time we've installed something in the car that's supposed to make it safer, people's premiums go up and nobody likes that. Um, and so they <laughs> are very wary of this right now. Um, I still see a future where we could work with insurance, but we probably have to prove that value and we'll have to be in market for a while before that's an opportunity. Um, that said, there's a lot of opportunity for these types of computer vision aspects actually in factories and warehouse distribution centers as well with forklifts. So we really are a computer vision based safety system that's focused on operators and drivers and that can exist in a lot of different places and that's something we're definitely exploring as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.